Hey, greetings. <laughs> Here we go again. Industry Minister Aubin Hill is defending the license granted to a Canadian firm to import cannabis in... It is time for Rastafari to get within the system of Jamaican governance. It's time we get out there and vote for what Rastafari needs in Jamaica to have a comfortable life, to raise our children, send them to school and get them a good education. The industry minister, Aubin Hill, is defending the license granted to a Canadian firm to import cannabis into the country. Despite the furore from some sections of the local industry, the minister made it clear that the importation was within the letter of the law. A lot of people who make it in life today, like Aubin Hill, is like, how did he come up? How did he get educated? It's because of taxpayers and taxes paid by people who earn money in Jamaica. We were, uh, we are, were obliged to consider it, and we considered it. It was, it was for the, it met the requirement, and because Canada is an is, is a, is a outstanding trading partner of Jamaica, it was not, it was allowed to come through in the normal way, so we followed the law. So why should Aubin Hill allow his group of people to approve that Canada can now import ganja into Jamaica when it is his governance, his government, the government that he support, annihilate Rastafari in 1963 and up to today, annihilating Rastafari for using our ganja that I and I grow locally without any growth promoters, any artificial insemination of our ganja seeds no manipulation of our ganja seed so so minister so are you saying this is this this is a one off approval request or, that or, we've and, had. and is it expected that additional request and approval will follow one of the things that i cannot do in the future member is to predict it i can't say what will come i i can tell you we will follow the law when they come minister hill what he mean by predicting is planning. So if you plan to give one license to come to Jamaica and sell cannabis, ganja, Canadian thing, I and I mean you have to plan for that because if you give one the gate open. So planning, predicting, if you want if you want to understand it like a Jamaican do. Seeing all right. Worrying news this evening for local players in the cannabis industry. The government has confirmed that Jamaica has begun importing cannabis. Now, the government says so far one shipment was sent to Jamaica from Canada. More in this report. Has Jamaica blown its chance to be one of the major players in the global cannabis trade? It's one of the questions many stakeholders are now asking following this bombshell admission from the Industrial Minister Aubin Hill in Gordon House Wednesday evening. The issue that has come up is one import that we've had. Um, and it was raised and um, it was under the trade arrangements, under the act that was passed and shepherded by you through Parliament, we were, we ha were obliged to consider it. And we considered it. It was, it was for the, it met the requirement. So confirmation that, that Jamaica has begun importing cannabis. The industry minister also refused to rule out any future imports of cannabis into Jamaica. This, this is a one-off um, um, approval. Request uh, uh, that we've uh, and, had. And is it expected that additional requests and approval will follow? One of the things that I tend not to do in the future, member, is to predict it. I can't say what will come. Opposition spokesman on industry, Anthony Hilton, was left stunned by the developments and demanded more answers. I, I'm, I'm still grappling to find out why and how. Could we get some explanation as to why and how and what in pursuit of what policy objective would that be done? 
The minister explained that the shipment of cannabis into Jamaica forms part of the country's trade agreement, meaning Canada is allowed to send cannabis here and Jamaica can export the commodity to Canada. But how many shipments have been sent from Jamaica to Canada? We've had nine requests facilitated for Canada since uh, 2021, up to, 20, up to 2020, and none since then. Uh, nine so, requests of what? May I ask? Of cannabis. To, 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 to go to Canada. Interestingly, though, no requests have been made to export cannabis to that country in over two years. So is it that Canada has been refusing some imports of the drug from Jamaica? We have seen no refusal by Canada um, of any export, authorized export from Jamaica. He reasoned that those players in the industry who say otherwise are just troublemakers. You need to understand, member, that there are persons who have good reasons to make it appear difficult that it is and may or may not be based in fact. I've given you the facts. Ganja is synonymous with parts of the Jamaican culture, especially due to its links with Rastafarians and music. Should Aubin Hill allow his group of people to approve that um, Canada can now import ganja into Jamaica when it is his governance, his government, the government that he support, annihilate Rastafari in 1963. And up to today, annihilating Rastafari for using our ganja that I and I grow locally without any growth promotants, any artificial insemination of our ganja seeds, no manipulation of our ganja seed. Now we have people coming into Jamaica bringing in ganja from Canada that was manipulated in lab to destroy our brains. Because those ganja don't have any seeds. Ganja cannot, if you find a seed in them, it cannot grow again. So why are we allowing Urban Hill to allow license for something going on, man. And corruption is a big part of this. Corruption is a big part of this. Rastafari, let us get up, stand up, and stand up for our rights right now. If we don't do that, we're going to be under the influence of the governance of Jamaica. I'm not talking about one party. They both do the same thing. Corruption, corruption, corruption. And we see it daily. Do not smoke any imported ganja coming into Jamaica. It is manipulated by those people. But, you know, it's all about money for enough of these people in Jamaica who are allowing other things other ganja from coming to come into Jamaica to manipulate our brains and then we drive fast on the road and kill each other because your brain manipulated to do that. Fast driving and killing people on the roads. We have to protest. Get out there right now and protest. See? Go into Mandela Park Emancipation Park, Harmony Beach Park in Montego Bay. We have to organize ourselves, go out there and protest this move by Arbin Hill and his clan. See, we have to stop him, stop him right now. Blessed Asta Black for you and yours. Let's do it. The authorities were, however, keen to remind the public that the legal international cannabis trade is only for medical and scientific purposes. Over £1.7 million of cannabis has been exported from Jamaica to all parts of the world since the cannabis trade started. I was very dissatisfied with this two-pilot project because I was saying to the government, rather than having a two-pilot project, why not have a rollout program for all the communities who want to participate 
you know, in the EAD program. Ross Ayavi founded the first Ganja Farmers Association in Jamaica in 2014. He explained why land continues to be an issue for local Ganja farmers, in particular in Westmoreland. The land that was promised to us, which was in um, Namprel Mountain, that land, it would cost millions of dollars to access, to develop good road, and then you cannot plant herb on certain level without um, electricity. So again, that would cost millions of dollars. We tried to get land in different, different, um, different areas of Orange Hill, including Mount Erie and so on. But land access is very difficult because a lot of these lands, even though taxes are up to date, um, some of these lands, there are no title for it, you know, and it's not everybody who wants to lease them land for ganja production. The farmers' distress over the lack of progress in the cannabis sector is shared by some lawmakers. They discussed the issue at last week's sitting of the Public Accounts and Appropriations Committee, PAAC. These traditional farmers, many of them feel hopeless. And we talk about renewing the, reopening the economy and giving new players and small players a, a place in it. Madam Pierce, if this is how we're going about it, they have no place in the reopened economy. And there's no hope for them. Representatives from the Ministry of Industry who were called by the PAAC to provide the country with an update on the ganja sector said plans are in place to expand the Alternative Development Ganja Program. We are going to make recommendations to the Cabinet and those recommendations are now being finalised internally for uh, not only the, for the continuation and expansion of the AD program. So it is the intention of the ministry to continue with the program. And when you say expansion, meaning? Other, to other communities, if to possible. To other communities. Yes. But ganja farmers like Ras Ayavi say they do not trust the policymakers and authorities. They are convinced big money is to be made from cannabis, but there are forces working against grassroots farmers. So while local stakeholders meander along searching for solutions, 50 countries are positioning themselves to take advantage of the multi-billion dollar market, that's US dollars. Those 50 countries have already legalized medicinal mar marijuana. But Rasaya V doesn't think hope is lost. He says Jamaica still has its appeal, and if the time comes, buyers will do business with Jamaica. Now, of course, marijuana can be used for a variety of purposes, including medicine, and as an ingredient in snacks known as edibles. So Janela, tomorrow we'll tell you what the farmers feel needs to be done to get more persons earning in the sector. Janela?